Hi there, this is Akiva Question Everything. I'm here with Rabbi Harry. How are you doing tonight? Feeling grateful, thank you. Good. We're here in a beautiful sukkah. Our friend Michal Weinstein is hosting. Tell me, what does Sukkot mean to you? Sukkot is um, the concept of feeling actually safe in your own brain, which will give us access to experiencing uh, life in a more pleasurable route. Meaning, did a psychological study. So people who build their houses with uh, you know, metal windows that close and uh, safety rooms that like, you know, panic attack rooms mm -hmm. and boxes, all the security you can put up in the world, those people experience statistically more anxiety than the people with just a little flimsy lock on their door. So why do we say Friday night, you know, when we're davening, Sukkot Shlomecha, uh, God protect us with your sukkah. Mm -hmm. We should say maybe Migdal, your tower, or your infrastructure that's more safe. But sukkah is a flimsy structure. How is this our protection? Mm -hmm. Psychologically, because you can never really be physically safe in this world, there's a level beyond that that's safer called trusting in the creator of the universe. That when you do trust in the creator of the universe, your brain actually, which is a drug dealer, yeah. hypothetically, because it's got serotonins and the dopamines and all these things that people are trying to chase from different drugs, your brain can naturally secrete it for you as long as you feel safe. So if you remind your brain that you feel safe, your brain will secrete chemicals that will allow you to experience nachas ruach, uh, calmness of the soul, yeah. and it will give you a good time on this planet. So Sukkot is the holiday that reminds us this exact note. Wow, amazing. Now, we were talking about this earlier. Tell me a little bit about the work that you're doing with the soldiers of Israel, if you don't mind sharing with what you're doing and how you're helping to heal our nation. Of course. Um, just a, a quick segue. So the Arba Minim on Sukkot is symbolic for the body. They say the lulav is your spine, the etrog is your heart, the aravot are your lips, and the hadasim are your eyes. So someone said that makes a lot of sense because you have your lulav is the spine, is this one thing, your etrog is one heart, the two aravot are your two lips. But I don't understand the three hadasim because you only have two eyes. And then the answer is no, we do have three eyes. All of humans have an eyeball in the middle of their brain called the pineal gland. We should Google it and look it up. Yep. It's a... Um, in the writings of our sages in the Torah in ancient Egypt, it's on the dollar bill. An eyeball in the middle of your brain that's responsible for secreting a chemical called dimethyltryptamine, DMT, which is actually a psychedelic, psychoactive chemical that heals you. So now what does it have to do with anything? Because now we got permission in Israel to help heal IDF soldiers with PTSD with such chemicals mm. to allow them to restart their life and to experience a, a moment of divinity mm. and all the trauma and pain that they're holding on to Whew. They could take a deep breath, let go, start again, yeah. and uh, process. So not only for the IDF soldiers, for Palestinian terrorists who have Jewish roots, perhaps, mm -hmm. um, which is a phenomenon in Israel, they have the right to heal also. So it's just basically the ability to open up uh, the eyeball in the middle of our brain, becoming a legal uh, reality, is yeah. the phenomenon that our fund, Trippy Davis, is right. in, involved in. And um, just a friendly reminder, obviously, also, that there's certain chemicals that the Nazis used to study that closed that part of the brain, notably fluoride. 1948, there was Operation Paperclip. A lot of Nazi scientists came to America after World War II. Uh, most Jews don't even know this. We're like, never forget. Never forget right. what? You forgot already because they came to America yeah. and they put the chemicals that target this one part of the brain right. in the water in the Nazi concentration right. camps. They did it in 1948. They put it in our toothpaste. It's still happening today. So we're just trying and to make... And that's between our foods, our chemicals, yeah, what was it? We're trying to make very gentle, subtle sh consciousness shifts where Kla Yisrael, our people, can have access to their minds and they could reopen parts of their minds that have been dormant potentially for thousands of years. They could heal and they could prepare themselves to be a light onto the nations. Wow. So, you know, we were talking about this earlier. We were clearly in the messianic age and we're, you know, we're going through a bit of a turbulent times. So what do you tell people who feel worn down by the geopolitical climate. We're being infiltrated. We don't even have attention span any longer. We have a 10 second attention span at best. How do we get back to our natural selves? How do we optimize our happiness? How do we, how do we battle what the geopolitical climate is forcing upon us? Sure, the first step is just realizing what's going on and healing the self within. So once we realize that we're under attack through um, waves of different chemicals and messages and, and the media manipulating, trying to cause us to be in a state of fear. But all this was studied by the Nazis, by the way, that they perfected it and scaled it. So uh, to make a docile human is an agenda that a government would, have, would like to have. It makes it much easier to govern humans that are like sheep that you can cause them to go. Definitely. So the first thing is like, are you even chewing gum? Do you know there's aspartame in your gum? Do you know aspartame is uh, from E. coli fecal matter and that causes you to have heightened anxiety and stress? Like, 
why are we medicating ourselves with things that cause us to be stressed and anxiety so another human could be pleased with my breath? I think we fall into a backward system that we have to rewind out. So it just starts with what are you putting in your body every single day um, and why are you doing that? Who told you to do that? Become a little bit more aware. And once we start to have these conversations and we start to have a hive mind, mm -hmm. we can start to make much bigger movements being like, are we sponsoring and financing companies that are actively supporting wars so I can go on vacation and put suntan lotion that's causing cancer on me? Um, we gotta just. We're going deep. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna put a little hard stop. So it comes with yeah. uh, teamwork, makes the dream work. I am a descendant of the Vilna Gaon, so for. For folks out there who don't know who the Vilna Gaon was, who, who was this man? He's on a, a. What we would refer to as a lineage of someone from King David who holds a position of keeping, uh, being a reminder for the children of Israel of what our goal and our mission is uh, for this thousands of years exile and the inevitable waking up from the exile to redeem ourselves. So. I have a passion, a fire inside of myself to remind my brothers and sisters not to fall asleep in this exile and get distracted, but to wake yourself up wow. and to search out what your ancestors wrote down. Phenomenal. Do you have like a sub stack where we can follow you? Do we have a website? Rabbi Harry on Instagram. Rabbi Harry? Well, we'll be or looking for you. Google the words psychedelics and Torah. My article comes up first. So just Google those two words and you find me. We'll be looking for you. Thank you, my dear brother. Chag Sameach. I'm here with Rabbi Harry. Don't forget to question everything.